And now, the night edition. Iraqi troops are pounded from the land, sea, and air in what one military official called the biggest Allied-initiated battlefield action of the war. Allied artillery supported by the big guns of the battleship Missouri and Allied warplanes blasted dug in Iraqi troops in southern Kuwait for three hours. And further north, Baghdad again took the brunt of Allied bombing raids. Bridges, buildings and battalions were targeted in what the Pentagon calls a healthy day of bombing. Also today, as many as 50 Iraqi tanks were destroyed when Marine fighter jets caught an Iraqi convoy moving in the open desert. At today's Pentagon briefing, officials said Iraq's infrastructure is destroyed or ineffective. Why he's sitting there and taking this pounding? Uh... And a military spokesman says four more Iraqi Scud launchers were destroyed by Allied planes today. He said a fifth Scud launcher blew up on its own. Three armed bank robbers are still at large, while Ken Lee of Levittown remains in serious condition at the Nassau County Medical Center. Lee was an innocent bystander, shot by one of the gunmen as they carried out a heist at the Marine Midland Bank on North Broadway in Jericho. News 12's Burl Britt reports. One woman appeared... The latest Scud attack comes as America's top military brass head for Saudi sand to take a first-hand look at the front line. News 12's Matt Jablow is in our newsroom now with the latest Gulf War developments. Matt? Two people were found dead in their Holtzville home, the victims of an apparent murder-suicide. I was at the scene Tuesday evening. The victims, 46-year-old Sharon DeTulo and her 44-year-old boyfriend Stephen Farrow, lived on Masonic Avenue in Holtzville. They were discovered shortly after 3 in the afternoon by DeTulo's 16-year-old son when he came home from school. He found them in their bed covered in blood. He found them deceased within the house uh, from an obvious gunshot wound. Both of them? Both were obvious gunshot wounds. Police say Stephen Farrow apparently shot Sharon DeTulo once in the head with a handgun, then turned the gun on himself. They say Farrow had been living with DeTulo for two years while separated from his wife. DeTulo's former husband, along with family and friends, were obviously shaken when police gave them the news. Police say a possible motive may have been that the couple was facing financial difficulties. Sharon DeTulo had two children, a 16-year-old son and a 13-year-old daughter. Controversy continues to linger over the Allied bombing of a Baghdad bunker. The U.S. insists that the bunker was an Iraqi military command center and a legitimate target. But Iraq maintains that the facility was a civilian bomb shelter and that several hundred people were killed in the attack. Iraq says 288 bodies have been recovered from the ruins of the bunker. And as the search continues for more victims, funerals are held for at least 20 people. A group of five to 6,000 Iraqis marched through Baghdad in an explosive funeral procession today. Soldiers and civilians firing guns angrily into the air. They shouted death to Bush and death to America and vowed to avenge the civilian deaths. The United States is holding to its statement that the bunker was an active military command post and that civilians shouldn't have been there in the first place. It was in central Isla. Roma? Right, Scott and Melba. 16-year-old Kelly Gutierrez would have been right here today, Central Islip's alternative high school. It is a school for students considered at risk, or that is, students who have academic problems in regular high school and yet are determined to turn their lives around and get that high school diploma. By all accounts, that's how teachers describe young Kelly, a bright, energetic, eager young woman who was determined to do well in her life and succeed despite having so many personal problems. That child was a wonderful... It's rather sadly ironic that Kelly wrote in her uh, diary on her 16th birthday, January 3rd, she said, another good day at school. I can't understand why me, but it feels good. Teachers here say they're numb. Some are numb beyond words, numb beyond tears. Uh, I saw some breaking down. I saw students hugging each other, holding on to each other. Uh, Kelly was obviously a very special young woman. That is it from here in Central Islip at the Alternative High School. I'm Roma Torre, back to the studio. All, All right, right Roma. Roma, thank you very much. As you might imagine, those recommendations didn't go over too easily with uh, many of the educators at the summit, but bo most do recognize that uh, school districts on Long Island are in a crisis situation, and there is a need to make plenty of sacrifices. Long Island is certainly going to suffer with the governor's proposed uh, budget cuts to education, amounting to about $450 million, and uh, that led one educator to estimate that property taxes on Long Island in areas such as Plainview here is likely to increase 
increase as much as 25 to 30 percent. So as you can see, it's not only education that's in, at stake in all of this, but the entire quality of life as we know it on Long Island as well. That is it from JFK High School in Plainview. I'm Roma Torrey. Let's go back to the studio. Higher taxes is not what anybody wants to hear. Thank Finally this hour, Valentine's Day is a traditional day for weddings, but this year's holiday brought some very unconventional wedding ceremonies. In Ohio, 23 couples gathered in a McDonald's restaurant to get married. The couples exchanged their vows in a mass ceremony sponsored by a radio station. One couple even got married at the drive through as the mayor read the vows over the loudspeaker. And in California, a groom and bride tied themselves together to tie the knot. After tying the knot literally and figuratively, the couple bung bungee jumped there right off a bridge. Aside from the jump, the wedding had all of the trimmings. Unbelievable. I guess you could say they really fell for each other, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Took the big leap. Well, that's it uh, for us for this hour. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bill Zimmerman. And I'm Roma Torrey. Stay tuned. More news continues.